All right, let's turn on these apps. See what's cracking. A nine dollar streak this morning. It's probably three to four. It's probably three to four a.m. It's three twenty-three right now. Just got everything ready to go. Spray a little bit of freshener in the car. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some eucalyptus oil. super early, couldn't go back to sleep. So I got some reading done and I hit the road a little bit earlier than normal. I got, I got in the car at about 3.15. It is now almost 4.30. And in that time, it has consisted of listening to podcasts, filling up the gas tank and declining trash. So much trash today. Absolutely awful trips. This week, I wanted to kind of get back into the swing of things, work every day, uh, make some videos, and really just get back into the, the routine, so to speak. So I'm up bright and early very early, and I hit the road even earlier than I normally do, and it was just awful this morning. I don't know if that's just particular to this day, or if is that normal. It didn't seem normal the last couple of weeks, although I hadn't gone out that early. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of airport trips, but I mean, these airport trips are just awful. Absolutely awful. I mean, trips that are like, you know, $17 to go five miles to pick up and 25 miles to drop off. So like 30 miles in total for $17, $18. Lyft and Uber. Uh, and I just kept declining. I probably have declined close to 50 trips in the last hour on both platforms. I still think I made the right decision because in order to get my wheels moving, I want to be motivated for the money I'm making. You know, I, I, think a, I think a thing that people don't think about, uh, I call them the busybodies. The people who think that you have to be busy in order to be successful. Um, if that's your thinking, is that you have to be a busybody to, to succeed in rideshare or the gig economy... I just don't understand that. I would have spent the last hour maybe making $20 uh, driving more than 20 miles, probably around 30 to 40 miles. And I would have been chasing my tail. But here's the kicker. 
is that I would have been in a terrible mood. I would have been uh, extremely upset, not happy. And how do you think that's going to affect uh, my my overall mood, my overall feeling, um, my overall, you know, just demeanor? Am I going to be uh, happy and in a, in a good place to, to speak with customers? Uh, is that going to lead to good ratings and good tips? Is that going to ha- make me have a good feeling uh, to want to continue or to strive uh, to, to get more trips? Um, is it going to make me want to get up tomorrow morning early and have the discipline to, to do this again tomorrow? No, it's not. Uh, I was actually prepared to just go home. Uh, I actually left the parking lot of the gas station and was heading back towards my house because I was just like, you know, this is, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to, you know, be done with this. Halfway there, Uber decides to send me a, uh, a request. It's a reservation uh, that I guess someone else didn't do. And they're paying me like 25 bucks to go about eight miles. So I have to pick this person up. Uh, it's about five miles there, but then, you know, it's not very far. She's just going to the airport, I think. So yeah, I'll do that all day. The question is, is there going to be anything worth while once I drop her off? Uh, if this, if earlier is any indication, uh, I might stick around for a little bit and then just start heading home, but we shall see. I mean, even if I have to double the miles back home, that's still better than a dollar per mile. So, you know, I've been, I've been showing in my videos about how I have, Included not only my dollars per mile, but my dollars per hour. And uh, I've gotten a little bit of feedback on the dollars per hour figure. Because I calculate dollars per hour a little bit differently than some people do. Some people only consider their driving time. And I get that. Um... Because they view that as like, hey, that's when I'm actively working. And I think if you're a smart driver, during that downtime, you're doing something. You know, you're not playing on Facebook or play, just, just playing around. You're doing something to better yourself, whether that be listen to podcasts or catch up on emails or studying to do some other side business you have, learning a language, something, doing something productive for those times where you are going to have to sit and wait, whether that be at the airport parking lot or be waiting for a ride. So I get it that, hey, it's like I'm doing something else. I'm being productive. Uh, I really only count my drive time as my hourly rate. And I get that. I think for me, it's helpful to think of my dollars per hour as door to door hours. And the reason I do that is because even if I'm sitting here in declining trips, in a way, I still am working. I'm still having to think. I'm still engaged in the business, so to speak, of doing this. I also think it's a helpful metric because when I do my numbers every day and I look at my weekly and daily rates, I don't just look at my hours. I look at the time that I was working. And I think it's helpful to look at those times and see what, what works and what doesn't. I think it's helpful to see like, Hey, 
when I, when I got up at 3 a.m. and I started driving, my dollars per hour work, uh, of working were down versus if I started at 4 a.m. In other words, it, it served me no benefit to get up earlier and work at 3 a.m. In that example, I wouldn't know that information unless I calculated it that way. So I find it useful to have it as a door-to-door hour um, to calculate that uh, dollars per hour. That's the way I like to do it. I think it's more helpful for me. So others might have a different opinion, but I think that I think that's the way to do it and the way to think about it. Because it because at the end of the day, it's helping to think about and be able to really know your numbers. All right, so I'm going to be picking up Morgan here. See you when I drop her off. Just dropped off Morgan. Let's see. They're still calculating that last trip. It should be about 25 bucks for a potential tip, which would be nice. All right, so let's look at what's going on outside the airport. Still a little bit of surge going on. Definitely not heading to the waiting lot. My chances of getting a trip this early are very slim to none. Uh, so I'm going to head out and see what is being offered. I'll turn on Lyft, see if there's anything worth my time. Got some sort of scheduled trip here. Let's see if Skeddy. Skeddy. Oh, yeah. No. No, not heading to the airport. Not heading to the airport, that's for sure. All right, let's see what Uber's got. Crash! He shoots! He scores! Put that one in the trash. Where it belongs. To be out of their minds. To be out of their minds. Uh, another one. Out of your mind, Uber. See, this is... <laughs> This is what I've been dealing with all morning. That's the kind of crap I saw. I mean, just utter garbage. Absolute garbage. I'll do that. I'll do that. That makes perfect sense. It's like literally down the road. So I'll be there in no time. And they're going to pay me four bucks to go a mile and a half. I'll do it. Lyft has been utterly useless today. Just down the road, getting some extra money. I mean, you can't really draw up better than that um, with no surge. If it's just a regular trip, I mean, it's literally on my way down the street. He's just going a half a mile, a mile, something like that. Four and a half dollars, sure. Leaves me in a good area. All right, so we'll pick up Angel, and then we'll, this will be a very short trip, and I will see you soon. All right, I got a tip from that nice lady I waited on and took to the airport, so not too shabby, not too shabby at all. All right, we're turning off Uber for a second because we got a good lift ride and we're heading just down the road a little bit and then I'm taking them a hop skip and a jump so this will be a total of about two and a half miles I'm gonna get about six dollars for it so I'll do that I will do that kind of a slow morning so far uh, you can just kind of tell by the movement of traffic by the surges or lack thereof being offered, um, you can just 
you can just tell the vibe, the energy is not is not here this morning. You know, there's the airport rides, but they're paying trash. And I'm not going to do that. So uh, it's been kind of slim pickings uh, so far. But we shall see. What, what in the world is going on there? That is a weird direction. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this one. Got a bad feeling about this that either he's in the wrong area or something. That's weird. That is a really strange pickup location. You know, one thing I like about Lyft is that if you get generally close. Lyft will let you say that you have arrived. They kind of allow for stupid crap like this, where the pickup pin might not be in the best spot. With Uber, you basically have to be hovering over the little dot. And sometimes it's either wrong or, you know, it doesn't make sense. So I like that about Lyft, that they let you, you know, kind of be able to adjust that a little bit. So basically there's a building here and that little yellow dude looks like he's in here. But the pickup pen is over here in another building. All right, so let's see if this is Jake. All right, dropped off my dirty Jake. I say dirty, man. He was stinky as all get out, man. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Man. I just don't, I don't understand that from some people. I can spray my... Deodorant crap in here. I'm bothered. And this dude just left a mess everywhere he went. Oh man. Look at that. A comfort for a dollar per mile. No. <laughs> oh. You have to do better than that. No. Yeah. No, that I was on my screen for two seconds. No. You have to do better than that. I guess this is a teach the algorithm day because I'm trying to teach the algorithm, stop, stop messing with me and doing this crap. Kind of strange. I'm not getting anything on Lyft. The whole ride over here on Lyft, I left it on and they were sending me rides constantly. And I accepted a couple of them because they were good you know, like a less than a mile or two miles for five, six dollars. And now that I'm actually parked and not driving, now I don't have anything. It doesn't make any sense. If I needed to go back home, that wouldn't be a bad ride. If I needed to go home, that wouldn't be bad. I'm going to turn lift off. <laughs> you saw me. I just turned it off. All right, go online. They finally decided to send me one. I think there was a glitch. I think there, <clears throat> I think there was a glitch or something. Oh my gosh. They are just, Uber is just bombarding me right now. All right, I'm going to close a bunch of apps. No. Uh, 
I think I declined that trip a little while ago. Oh my gosh. Okay, I could do that. I could do that. Two minutes, five bucks. So it's about $30 an hour. The dollars per mile. I could do that. So I made a huge mistake. I was not going to Love Field. I was going to this executive airport down here in South Dallas. So now I'm down here. This is going to completely screw me up for the schedule trip that I had. So let's see by if, if by some miracle I'm able to get, uh, get a trip to my reservation. I highly doubt it, though. Man, I really screwed up on that one. And my app's been glitching the whole time. It's been bad. It has been really bad. Not, not the best morning. Not the best morning. Uh, I guess I'm not firing on all cylinders today. Happens. I made a mistake. I made a boo-boo. I'm going to try to filter through this trash because there is a lot of trash down here. My gosh. A lot of garbage. Yeah, I'm not... Man, that really screwed me up. I mean, some of these rides are going where or in the direction or where I want to go. But they're paying terrible. So I'm kind of debating on whether or not I should take them. I mean, it's like, do I just want to get out of here? Or do I want to be patient and at least get something, you know, going where I want to? Um... I'll take it. I'll take it. It's not bad. It sends me... It sends me in the direction I want to go. So I'm on my way. Pick up Julian. There's a number of factors that I just realized. This is an Uber pet. And if I had known that, I probably would have not taken it. But... I've got a, I got a sense that this might be okay. They've got a 4.98, so they haven't been rated poorly in the past. So maybe their dog or whatever animal they have is not messy, not, not too bad. Let's hope. Um, also, he's been messaging me quite a bit, so maybe he'll be appreciative that I'm showing up. Uh, looks like he's going to the private airport, um, the private side of the airport, uh, over by, um, over by Love Field. So there's a lot of factors here that on the, on the surface, this isn't the best ride. It's about 16 miles, I think for $13. So less than a dollar per mile, <clears throat> but hopefully he's very appreciative and I treat him good and that I get a good tip, but I bought a blanket for this exact instance so that, uh, you know, it was like a really nice blanket. Um, I got it super cheap, like Amazon prime and I completely forgot to put it in the car. Completely forgot to put it in the car. It's meant to cover the seats, uh, make sure there's no dog hair or anything like that inside. So let's just hope that this is a worthwhile trip that ends up working in my favor and I can erase the mistake that I made. Now, is this going to compound my mistake or erase my mistake? That is the question. All right, I'm going to pull up and pick up this guy. 
Hey, brother. And we got all your bags in the trunk. Okay. Sweet. All right. Okay. Oh, it looks like I'm bleeding. You ever do that? Just have random cuts? Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hey, uh, Julian, do you mind if I take a quick photo of, of your dog just real quick? Is that okay? All right, I'll just turn around here. Hey, Pebbles! He's so cute. So how old is Pebbles? Wow. She's, uh, she's like 90 years old in dog years. Oh, yeah, she seems super chill and just yes. a great, a great uh, influence, I could say. Just dropped off my man, Julian, and his dog, Mrs. Pebbles. All right, so in terms of an Uber pet trip, that is about as perfect as it could go guy was very very nice and also extremely considerate he had a blanket with him he laid it down on the seat he helped the dog into the car made sure that the dog didn't scratch anything or get any hair anywhere the dog was super chill that, that was a great experience. I mean, honestly, the man should teach classes on pet etiquette. I mean, just honestly, I don't even care if he tips me at this point because that was such a pleasurable experience. Very nice guy, very good pet very thoughtful, very considerate. I mean, I just, I just wish more, <clears throat> more riders were like him, you know? Uh, so nothing but good things to say about that trip. And I got a dental appointment later today. So we'll go ahead and uh, make this our final rally call and end on a good note, you know, uh, a little bit frustrating, had a lot of issues with the getting rides earlier, had phone trouble, uh, lots of trash, decline, 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 um, ended up making a mistake and going to South Dallas, just kind of a so-so day, a so-so day, just, you know, I, I would love to stay busy, I really would, I, I, I would love to just be able to do my job, not really have to do too much thinking. And, but Uber and Lyft want to play games and they get me sometimes too, but I'm not just going to accept anything that, with, that has a flashy sign uh, and says, Hey, take it, take it, take it. Don't take it. 